What is up guys, Technicals here. It's the Sunday switch up, time for me to switch my mining rig to something new. So some of you have asked based on my first uh, return video, uh, how I'm choosing these coins. I said very clearly that I don't believe in chasing the most profitable thing and selling out. Uh, I'm looking for low difficulty stuff with a high reward. So I'm gonna take you briefly through uh, my strategy, this new strategy. I think a lot of people follow this actually, but uh, it's new to me. I'm gonna take you through where I find these coins and how I determine what I'm gonna be mining for the next few days, when I know to stop, and uh, how the experience has been for me thus far. On the technicals, let's get into it. The technicals. All right, so what's the strategy? Very basically, I'm looking for coins that have a very low difficulty, a depressed difficulty for any number of reasons, or just in general, a higher block reward. That's gonna be when you go to the mining calculators, typically what to mine, hash rate.no, uh, you're looking at the very top of the list based on your hardware, what is the most profitable thing to mine right now. And for many people, they chase this day to day. They log in every single day and whatever the most profitable thing is, they switch their hardware over to that, mine that, and if it changes, they switch back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Some people do nice hash or unminable or other things like that. There's auto switching platforms. Me, I'm more concerned about the upside, the X factor, how much appreciation I can get out of a lot of these coins. Because again, I'm only dealing with three GPUs. So I'm not really making really much of anything. I'm really mining these coins on the hope that they're going to go up uh, by a, a factor of 10x, 20x or something like that. Because mining and then selling into Bitcoin or doing something like nice hash that gives you Bitcoin, Bitcoin's not gonna go 100X. Uh, I know you, everyone thinks it's going to a million zillion dollars and maybe one day in a decade, but I'm really concerned about the upcoming bull run, the one that's in the next 12, 18, 24 months. What coins can I mine today that are gonna give me 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, 100? I know what you're saying. Most of these coins are, are probably not gonna do that. A lot of them are gonna flounder. A lot of them are gonna fail or rug or just completely evaporate into the ether. And I know that. I know that this is gambling. If I'm going to play a roulette, I'm not gonna put it on black or red. I'm gonna put it on 23 and hope for that 27 to one return versus that two to one return. Because again, I'm not operating a business here. This is a hobbyist, a speculist, speculist speculative type play uh so that's how i do it that's my strategy moving forward could it change maybe uh, i mean as more information rolls in i might modify this system moving forward but let's take a look at where i find these coins all right so i'm over here on what to mine everybody's very familiar with this i'm sure you put in your crypto mining hardware and it's going to spit out for you the the details on what you're going to be able to mine for that day as of right now bitcoin gold on zhash uh, Nurai and then Zhash from NiceHash because Zhash Bitcoin Gold is at the top. And then moving through, you know, this is this is you know what you're going to revenue. This is your profit underneath. This is typically where my eyes immediately go uh, when I'm looking at this website. But scroll down. What I've begun to look at is over here on the difficulty uh, net hash column. So what I'm looking for, and again, this is only in the past 24 hours, I believe. Uh, it's showing the difficulty ups and downs, and we'll find we'll see this on some other websites uh, for these particular coins. And so, what I'm looking for is a big drop in the network hash rate, and that usually correlates with a price drop or some bad news or something like that. For some reason, a bunch of miners left. They don't want to go too far down. Again, I don't try to go too far down because you start getting into some real dog shit. Uh, so going down here is stuff that just makes no sense to mine whatsoever. Uh, so somewhere in the middle, somewhere on the lower end, uh, but then comes into play the coin itself. And I know I say over and over again, I don't care what the coin does, but I do care if the coin seems appealing to everybody else. Everybody else needs to like it in order to buy it, to drive up the demand to increase the price so I can sell at a profit. Hashrate.no, much the same, a little more accurate. Some people feel a little more detailed, uh, but you're, it's gonna be specific to your hardware more so. Uh, and you find a lot of overlap on um, a lot of the coins that are listed on here. You can also head over to Minerstat. That's gonna show you right on the homepage in the last six hours, biggest hash rate losers. Now I haven't really got a lot of picks out of this one yet because a lot of these are really just obscure coins I've never heard of and I'm not sure I really wanna to touch. It also shows the gainers, the ones that maybe I don't wanna stay on or if uh, I'm already mining one of these and just had a big spike in the hash rate. Uh, maybe time for me to get off because I'm just not getting as much bang for my buck. But the best place so far, the place where I've found the, sort of the most relevant information to my personal strategy is going to be miningpoolstats.stream. Typically what I'll do is I'll sort the difficulty all the way down. These here at the very, very end, there's going to be no data. So I find if you typically jump to page four, five, six, you start getting some results here showing, you know, this real junk. Now, this is where I start adding in 
another piece of information to kind of look and see what I might want to mess with. So these here at the very end are usually nothing I'm going to want to mess with. If, if a network's lost 100% of its hash rate or 99%, there's something really wrong with it and it's probably not something I want to mess with. Next thing I'm looking at is volume because it doesn't make sense to mine something if you can't sell it. If there's absolutely no one buying this coin, I'm not going to, I'm not going to mine it. I'm, I'm not that big of a gambler. Anything over five, ten thousand dollars in 24 hour volume, I'll at least look at and explore further. Anything under that is probably just too little. Uh, stuff that's on really obscure exchanges and only one exchange, probably gravitate away from that just a little bit because it's kind of you know uncertain whether that exchange is really gonna hold on to it. Do I really wanna go and make an account on these crazy exchanges just to move uh, the small amount of coins? It looks like Irish coin lost 96% of its network hash rate, but it had $27,000 in volume. So if you know, I was able to mine this, then I should be able to get a whole bunch of block reward and there's enough volume there to where I may be able to sell it in a week, two, three weeks, month, two months, whatever. But the next thing I'm gonna look at, obviously, is the algorithm because it doesn't matter if, I can, it's a script coin. So how many people are on this right now with their L3 pluses, plus pluses, sevens, whatever? Uh, I, I'm not going to be competitive. I typically find the sweet spot comes between the 60 and 30% range. I know it's a big gap. It's a big standard deviation. Metaverse on at hash, $26,000 in volume, 70% network drop. It's on at hash though. I'm not touching it. One of my longtime favorite coins, I'm not going to mine it because it's an ASIC coin, but Dash is one of my original favorite coins. Uh, lost 38.7% of its network hash rate, 42 million in volume, so plenty there. So if you've got a, a, an X11 ASIC, maybe a good time to jump on Dash. I thought this might happen because the market has been kind of nosediving a little bit these past couple days since the ETF went live. So it's not uh, surprising to see that so many coins have had a big drop in their network hash rate. Finally, we run across a coin that might be a, uh, a, a potential over here. Looks like CryptoLuck lost 33% of its network hash rate over the previous seven days. Not even $2,000 in volume. It is some volume and it recently listed on our plant. So I head over to Bitcoin Talk, took a look at the website and said, hell no. So here's a good one that I've already been mining a little bit uh, from my, one of my previous runs is Ironfish. So Ironfish, I like the website, I like the branding. The purpose of the coin, don't really care too much about, uh, but 30% drop in its network hash rate almost $700,000 in volume in the previous 24 hours, and it's on Blake 3, so it is GPU mineable. So let's look a little bit more into Ironfish to see if it's something that we wanna do on today's switch up. There, I resized the window. Why didn't you guys tell me the window was too big? Anyway, over here on Ironfish's website, Ironfish encrypts every transaction, shielding your sensitive asset information from public view, three and only view keys, and you remain compliant and in control. So Ironfish, I do like the uh, the branding. They seem to put some development behind it. It's got a quirky sort of uh, look to it. I know this is all superfluous type stuff that I'm looking at here, but again, it's not, I, I'm not looking at whether or not I like it. I'm looking at whether or not other people and the masses in general will see a coin like this and go, yo, that looks like a great coin. I want to buy it. And then that means that I can cash out. Ironfish, I like your product. If you're watching this, I know you're not, but uh, I don't, I don't really care what your coin is, just being honest, um, but it, it looks great. Final thing, I'm gonna look at the price. I'm gonna see if this thing's already mooned too hard and if it's uh, got any legs to last until the next bull run. So kind of not a good sign. Looks like Ironfish when it debuted, it was super duper high, went down into nothing and then kind of is coming back up. But you know, it's not one of those where it went super really ultra high and then went down and crashed into absolute nothing and it's just been kind of floundering and flopping on the deck like a, a half dead fish uh, there is some activity here and it looks like it's recent activity since november uh the price has steadily been creeping up up to two and a two dollars 27 cents per fish uh from its high right at the beginning at seven i don't know if you can really count that i'm not a, a chart analyst and I don't, I don't really believe in chart analysis anyway chart analyzer people on youtube <laughs> knew what they were doing they'd be billionaires and they wouldn't be telling us how to do it take from that what you will if you believe in charts and bollinger bands and you know uh regressions and uh, science believe in that if you want i'm not sure i really buy it ironfish it's looking good Let's switch it up and head over to fish. All right, so I'm over here on my simple mining. Just kidding. We're gonna switch over to iron fish now. And it's good that we checked out mining uh, pool stats instead of just taking the information straight off what to mine. What to mine is still showing uh, the difficulty on iron fish at 1.78 petahash. Mining pool stats .stream, it's showing the difficulty at 104. And if you take it off of their network explorer, uh, showing at 107, so certainly much, much more updated. So yeah, we're gonna achieve more block reward. We're gonna get more fish. 
uh, because we love those fish, don't we? I actually turned my rig off to record this video. So I'm gonna go turn my rig on and rest in peace to my audio quality. And so I'm over here on Hero Miners. I know you're supposed to spread the hash rate around. Don't concentrate on the one pool. I'm about hitting them blocks, son. I want the money. So uh, I'm not I'm not really about the cause. I'm not, uh, I'm not doing jihad here. Uh, so we're gonna wait for this to come up, make sure that we're getting the hash rate that we deserve at the pool. And we're gonna stay on Ironfish for a while. If the Ironfish network goes through the roof or the difficulty spikes or something like that, then we'll reevaluate. But typically I like to leave this running on my machine, um, you know, at least 24 hours, just not look at it. I'll, you know, I'll check on it to make sure that things aren't overheating and whatnot. So that's basically my strategy. Just to recap, I'm gonna look for coins that have a low difficulty or a high block reward, something I can get a lot of, because again, I'm not dealing with a lot of power here. I don't have a big farm stuff that has volume so when i do go to sell it i know that there's someone out there buying it coins that are relevant for me to mine on a gpu i'm not looking for asic coins or cpu coins once we get into cpu mining then we'll do the same thing but just with cpu coins and then how do i know when to stop you know when the difficulty spikes the reward goes down it doesn't make as much sense for me to do it when everybody joins the party when all 1 million people watch this video and say, I want to do Iron Fish now too, and you jump on the coin, then I'm getting off. I'm going on to something else. So I'd love to know what you guys are doing in the comments below. Do you day-to-day -day chase the coin du jour, the most profitable thing? Do you sell it out at the time? Are you holding on to it, waiting for the next bull cycle? Genuinely, because I've been out of this for so long, I'm looking to see, I'm looking to sort of crowdsource my opinion here. Uh, on what you guys are doing. So let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you watching the video this far in. If you would, leave me a like, turn on your notifications, do all that other stuff. Trying to grow, trying to get back to monetization, baby. Otherwise, I'm the Technicals. See you next time.